إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة My dear brothers and sisters on the day of judgment Everyone will have to cross over Jahannam. Everyone will have to cross over the hellfire. And this bridge known as As Sirat or the path is As Sirat. The Prophet Sallallahu he said in a hadith in Sahih Muslim from Abi Sa'id al Khudri. رضي الله عنه الصراط الصراط جسر أدق من الشعر the path or the صراط the bridge is the bridge a صراط is the bridge over جهنم and it will be thinner than a strand of hair وأحد من السيف and it is sharper then the blade of a sword. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring it or put it over Jahannam. And everybody, every believer, in order to arrive at, in, in order to enter paradise, will have to cross. And the disbelievers, who are not able, who will not be able to cross it, will fall into the hellfire. And so this bridge, crossing this bridge, is not easy. And it doesn't depend upon your acrobatic skills. Because you work in a circus does not mean you're gonna pass and get over this bridge. How do you, how do we ourselves cross this bridge which is sharper than the blade of a sword and thinner than a strand of hair? And this will be the topic of this khutbah insha'Allah. Everyone will have to cross it without any exceptions. 
And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِن مِنْكُمْ إِلَّا وَارِدُهَا كَانَ عَلَى رَبِّكَ حَتْمًا مَقْضِيًّا And there's not anyone amongst you except that he will have to cross it. Indeed, this has been by your Lord decreed. <coughs> decreed by your Lord. And so we have to cross this bridge. And you have to understand that every one of us here right now, by reflecting and thinking about how we are, we will know how we will cross this bridge. Right now, at this moment, we can figure out and we can find out if we are in front of that bridge, how are we going to cross it? We can figure out how we're going to cross it. Right here. And we, can, we will know also if we're in front of there, in front of that bridge, are we going to be those who will be able to cross it easily or with great difficulties? Over this bridge, there are many, there are difficulties of course in crossing this bridge. But it's not because of your acrobatic skills. It will be determined by, determined by the deeds that you do in this life. It will be determined by certain facets of your deeds in this life. Because there will be some on that day who will cross the bridge in a flash. They will be so quick, they will be over it in no time. And there will be some who will cross this bridge running. And there will be some who will be slower than that. And there will be others who will be crawling. And there will be some who will not make it. And there will also be hooks that will come from Jahannam that will pull people into it. There will also be hooks. So who are we going, how are we, which person or which type of people are we going to be on that day? Are we going to be the fast ones who cross it in a flash? Or will, we be, will, or will we be the ones that are struggling? You have to understand it will also be dark. But there will be some people who will have light. Some will have light that will surround them. The size of a mountain. Some will have light the size of a person standing. And others will have the size of a light, the, the, a flicker, just like the size of a thumb. Just like a candle light. And it flickers on and off, and that's the light you're going to use to try to cross it. So how is this light also determined? And how is your quickness also determined? It's all determined by our deeds in this life. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders us to do something, are we quick in responding to His orders? If we are quick in responding to His orders, then we will also be quick on that day. So think about yourself right now. When we hear the orders of the Prophet ﷺ, when we hear the orders of Allah, and when we hear the prohibitions of Allah and His Messenger, are we quick to stay away from, the, from them? Or do we hesitate and do we delay? That will determine how quickly we go. And that's why the believers the true believers will cross very quickly. Why? Because the true believers are quick in responding to the orders of Allah and His Messenger. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhaladheena amanu stajibu lillahi wa lil rasul. O you who believe, give your response to Allah and His Messenger. Ya ayyuhaladheena amanu stajibu lillahi wa lil rasul. Ida da'akum lima yuhyikum. When they call you to that which gives you life. In this life and in the hereafter. Life that's forever. And so, if we are quick, then we will also follow it quickly. If we're quick also, when we do, when we do commit mistakes, when we make mistakes, are we quick to, re to repent to Allah? Or do we delay it until tomorrow, next week, until after hajj, after marriage, and so forth? That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَسَارِعُوا إِلَى مَغْفِرَةٍ مِّن رَبِّكُمْ وَجَنَّةٍ عَرْضُهَا السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ and quickly, go quickly, and compete with each other quickly, go forward quickly in the, in the, to the repentance of your Lord, to asking forgiveness for your Lord. 
So the quickness will also determine how quickly you get to Jannah, to paradise. Your quickness in, re, in, re, in responding or in repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also. <clears throat> and thus, when something happens, we have to be quick in obeying and in disobeying. We have to make that part of our nature. Like during the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when Abdullah ibn Ruwaha was coming to the masjid, he only heard one word from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and that was Ijlisu, so sit down everybody. And immediately he sat down outside the masjid. Because it was natural, his natural instinct was that this was an order, and so he was quick and he didn't take another step forward. And that's why the Prophet sallallahu when he heard about this, afterwards he said, Zadakullahu hirsan ala tawa'ita lillahi wa rasulih. May Allah increase you in the obedience of Allah and His Messenger. So, that is why when we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when we pray every single day, 17 times a day at least, <coughs> minimum, we read, Ihdina siratul mustaqim. Guide us to the straight path. Guide us and keep us on the straight path. When you say, Ihdina as siratul mustaqim, it means guide us and keep us on the straight path. Keep us firm on the straight path. And when you're asking Allah to keep you firm on the straight path, if you're firm on the straight path in this life, you will also be firm in the sirat also. On the day of judgment. When you're crossing over Jahannam. And that's why we have to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be firm and be consistent. And that's why one of the, one of the du'as that the Prophet sallallahu used to always make all the time. As the companions have narrated to us from Anas and Malik and Aisha radiallahu anha. They have narrated to us that the du'a that the Prophet ﷺ made the most when she was asked what du'a did he make the most? It was Ya Muqallib al Qulub Thabbit Qalbi ala Deenik. Ya Muqallib al Qulub Thabbit Qalbi ala Ta'atik. O changer of the heart, make my heart firm in your path. And that's why we have to be firm and we have to be straight. We have to stay on the straight path so that on the day of judgment we will stay on the straight path. We will stay straight and firm until we reach, we will reach Al-Jannah. And do not go left and right. Because if you go left and right, and there will be people who will try to pull you left and right. And pull you off the straight path. Just like in, over the bridge, there will be hooks that will try to pull you off. So if you get hooked by these people in this life, you will get hooked also in the hereafter. So when people are calling you to the left, to the right, this way and that way, away from the straight path, you stay away from it. Stay away from them and stay on and stay firm on the straight path. What do we mean by firm? I mean trying to stay as firm as possible without following these different roads that lead to Jahannam, that will may eventually make you fall into Jahannam. And that's why a companion came to the Prophet ﷺ and he said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, tell me something in Islam that I can ask no other. That nobody can tell me about. If he's gonna, he, look at this question. Nobody else can tell him. So this is something that's going to be very important, so listen to what he has to say. What did the Prophet ﷺ say? Very short, concise, to the point, but very beneficial. He said, قُلْ آمَنْتُ بِاللَّهِ ثُمَّ اسْتَقِدْ قُلْ آمَنْتُ بِاللَّهِ Say, I believe in Allah, then be firm, be righteous, and be upright on the straight path. ثُمَّ اسْتَقِدْ And be firm. Even if it's only a little bit, be consistent. Because the deeds that are more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are deeds that were consistent. خَيْرَ الْأَعْمَالِ أَدْوَمُهَا وَإِنْ قَلْ The best deeds are that which is consistent even if it's just a small amount. And so, <coughs> we have to be quick in responding to the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we have to also quick in staying away and obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when He prohibits us from doing things. And so, when we are, when we are living, any times in times of hardship, or any times of ease, be firm and be consistent in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you'll be firm and consistent also, in the hereafter. And that's why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, تَعَرَّفْ إِلَى اللَّهِ فِي الرَّخَاءِ يَعْرِفْكَ فِي الشِّدَّةِ تَعَرَّفْ إِلَى اللَّهِ فِي الرَّخَاءِ Know Allah in times of, of ease, and Allah will know you in times of hardship. And so, it's the quickness how we respond. And you have to understand that the light that Allah gives you also when you're crossing this bridge 
On the day of judgment, we will need light because there will be total darkness. But where will you get that light? The light will come from many sources. Amongst those sources are the prayers. When you pray, and when you're quick into res in responding, when you're praying on time, when it's time to pray, immediately you pray. And when it's time to pray, you come to the masjid early, before the mu'adhan makes the adhan. And that's why the faces of those people who come early will be like the face will, will be bright like the sun before the adhan is made. And those who come when the adhan is made, their faces will be like the faces of moon, the moon. And those who will come afterwards, afterwards, who delay, then they will have the flicker just like the stars, the stars and the planets that you see. And so it will be according to that. And so the prayer that we have is, will be light for us. As the Prophet wasallam, he said, as salatu nur wa sabr wa as salat prayer is nur, prayer is light. And was sabr, liya. And patience is also light. So some of these things that will give you light on the day of judgment are prayer and patience. But what's the difference between nur and law or liya? What's the difference? One is cool and the other one is hot. The light of the sun, you don't call it nur. You don't say, you don't call it nur. You say, dhaw or shams. Because dhaw is accompanied by heat. But you say, nur al qamar. The light of the moon, because it's not accompanied by heat. That's why when you read in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will describe, Allah subhanahu wa will make a shams al liya. Wal qamar an nura. And then he makes, he get the qamar, the, the, the moon. Uh, the, 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 the light that comes from it is nur. Why? Because prayer puts you at ease. Prayer puts a Muslim, a believer at ease. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ used to say to Bilal, Arihna biha ya Bilal. Put us at ease, put us at peace. When you pray, it's peacefulness. And this is a peaceful light. But when it comes to patience, وَالصَّبْرُ ضِيَا Patience is light also. But you know, patience is accompanied by heat. When you, in order for you to be patient, you have to persevere and hold back that heat that's inside and it's burning. And you want it to release. You want it to release it, but you hold back. But that light is accompanied by heat. As-salatu nur wa sabru diha. Prayer is nur. And then that, this is another way you, that you will have light on the day of judgment. Also when you're crossing the sirat. There will be some people who will just have a flicker. Others will have the size of mountains around them. And imagine crossing anything, anything, even if it's just a small, just something that's very easy to cross without light, it's difficult already when it's total darkness. But imagine if you just have a flicker, how are you going to move? And there will be some people who will be crawling and they won't make it. So you yourselves, we ourselves, everyone here, think of ourselves right now. Do some muhasaba, do some accountability. When it comes to the orders of Allah, how quick are we in responding? How quick are we in responding? When we know something is haram, how quick are we to stay away from it? When we know that this is the sunnah, how quick are we to apply it? When we know that this is what the Prophet ﷺ did, how quick are we to apply it? And then you can, you can figure out also. And when it's time to pray, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, how quick are you to pray? How quick are you to drop everything and say Allahu Akbar and then pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How quick are you in doing that? And so, also when you cross the sirat, there'll be some help. You'll have some help. What's that help? On the Sirat, two things will come to the side. On your left and on your right. The Prophet ﷺ said two of these things will come. Al-Amanatu wa rahim Al-Amanah, trustworthiness, and, you know, being trustworthy. And Al-Rahim, 
Al-Rahim. Al-Amana, being trustworthy. You don't cheat people. When people entrust you with something, you don't cheat them. And when you entrust it with children, you put them in the proper place and give them proper education. All the trusts that you have been given, and trustworthy will be, trustworthiness will be the first thing that will be lost. And it will be one of the first signs of the Day of Judgment. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, إِذَا ضِيَعْتِ الْأَمَانَةِ فَانْتَذِرِ السَّاعَةِ When the trust is lost, then wait for the Day of Judgment. Then wait for that day. When the companions ask, when is the Day of Judgment? He said, وَكَيْفَ إِضَاعَتُهَا يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ They said, how can it be lost? How will it be lost? The Prophet ﷺ then said, إِذَا وُسِّدَ الْأَمْرُ إِلَى غَيْرِ أَهْلِهِ فَانْتَذِرِ السَّاعَةِ When people are appointed who are not qualified or who are not the appropriate people to be appointed for certain responsibilities and they're not taking care of that trust, then wait for the Day of Judgment. And then when you look at the Muslim world nowadays, we have... We can bring the world to a standstill. Allah has given us so much resources that just one word will make the whole market crash from just some of the countries, some of the leaders, this whole power that's in the Muslims' hand. But they have not, they have been in, the, the, the Muslims' wealth, they've given, given so much, Allah has given them so much strength, given us so much strength. But they're in the wrong hands. The hands of people who are not trustworthy, who are not taking care of that trust. And so it's, lo it's lost from the top and even in our communities. You can't trust anybody anymore. And we've lost that trustworthiness. And also our rahim. We have lost the bonds of rahim, the bonds of relations. We have, we're cutting relations. The children no longer obey their parents. They have become the masters of their parents. They are no longer asking things from their parents, but they're ordering their parents when they want something. And they're ordering their parents, and that's what the Prophet ﷺ said. When, when one of the signs of the Day of Judgment, the Messenger of Allah ﷺ mentioned that amongst the signs of the Day of Judgment is when a female slave gives birth to her master. And one of, the, one of the interpretations of some of the scholars like Al-Imam Nawi rahimahullah he said one of the possible meanings is that there will be such great disobedience that a woman will give birth to her master. What does a master do? The master orders. So you have children coming, Mom, you're going to buy me that Xbox or else. You buy it for me. They're not asking, can you buy me the Xbox, please? No, you buy it for me. Everyone's got it. You have to buy it for me. There's no option for you now. When they want something, there's no more obedience. And so, brothers, uh, please come up, move up forward so we can have space for those who are coming later. And so you have people, the greatest rahim, the closest to your mothers, to our mothers. And so, and then our fathers, and then the PR relatives. So enjoin relations. We no longer enjoin relations. And by enjoying relations, this will help you enter paradise. Because the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لا يدخل الجنة قاطع. In a hadith in Sahih Bukhari, the Prophet sallallahu said, a person who cuts relations will not enter paradise because he will not be able to cross. He will not be able to cross. Those who don't enjoy relations. And that's why the first thing that the Prophet ﷺ said when he arrived in Medina, he said, Afshu salam wa at'im al ta'am wa sil al arham. Wa sil al arham. And enjoin relations. وَصَلُّوا بِاللَّيْلِ وَالنَّاسُ نِيَامِ تَدْخُلُوا الْجَنَّةَ بِسَلَامِ He said, spread the salams and enjoin 
you know, feed the poor and enjoying relations. And so the Prophet ﷺ also said, and then pray when people are sleeping and you'll enter paradise in peace, with peace. And the Messenger of Allah ﷺ also said, تَعَلَّمُوا مِنْ أَنْسَابِكُمْ مَا تَصِلُوا بِهِ أَرْحَامَكُمْ Know your relatives, know your relations, so that you can, that, so you can enjoy these relations. And as I mentioned, the one that deserves the righteous, your righteousness and piety the most, first of all, is your, your mother. Your mother and your mother. We all know that hadith. But, you know, and make sure that you please her, do all that you can to please her. But nowadays, you know, in the hadith in which the, the three men who were in a cave, when they were stuck in the cave, the first person who made dua, he said, Oh Allah, I had parents who were very old and I came back very late one day seeking pasture for my flock and so they had gone to sleep so I provided milk for them I mean I got I, brought, I, I went and milk for them, I got the milk for them and they had got, already gone to sleep and he said I stayed next to them I was afraid to wake them up he was, I was afraid to wake them up and they slept until the morning he was afraid to wake them up but you know children nowadays they keep their mothers awake because they don't know where their children are. The mothers can't sleep because they don't know where their daughters are. The mothers can't sleep because they don't know where their children, their sons are. That's, how, well, that's what we have become. And so join relations and teach our children to enjoy relations also. With family members, with your aunts and uncles. Because if you don't do this, then you will fall. If you don't have amana and you don't have and you don't have enjoying relations, then you will not be able to cross the sirat. So I want everyone to think right now. The amana and the rahim that we have, and also your prayers and how quick you are in responding, and then put yourself in front of the sirat when you're praying, when you're standing up every day. How far, how are you going to cross it? Actually, everyone, we, we know how we are in comparison to the, to the orders of Allah and His Messenger. How fast are you going to go? Are you going to be those people who are just crawling? And maybe you might be one of those who might be picked up by the hooks. Because people come. All, it takes only one person to call you and you're gone already. You're off, the, you're, you're off the track or you're off the path already. So everyone think about yourselves, your prayers and how you are re in response to Allah and His Messenger. Then you will see how fast you are how quickly you are, how much light you have when you're crossing that path. And every single time you, are say, you pray, اِهْدِنَا الصِّرَاطُ الْمُسْتَقِيمُ You say, اِهْدِنَا الصِّرَاطُ الْمُسْتَقِيمُ You're asking Allah to keep you firm in this path and in the hereafter also. أَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَأَسْتَغْفِرَهُ لِي وَلَكُمْ فَاسْتَغْفِرُهُ إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله ولتنظر نفس ما قدمت لغد واتقوا الله إن الله خبير بما تعملون. As I mentioned, our quickness in responding to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will also determine how Allah Subhanahu wa Taala responds to us, and it was also, it will also determine how quickly Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will allow us to enter paradise. And our trust, our putting, our putting of our trust in Allah Subhanahu wa Taala also will help us. So on the day of judgment, on the day of judgment, when we are standing in front of Allah, and on the day of judgment, when we're ready to cross, the conditions are very harsh, but it's determined. You know, everything that you do, you need practice. Everything that you do, 
you need skills for them and the skills for survival and the dangers of the hereafter are acquired during these days so those people who used to go at night time in the dark for Fajr prayer and those who leave at night time after for Isha prayer especially with the you know, late Isha in the darkness they will be the ones who have light on the here, in, the, in, in, in the hereafter and those who are quick to respond will also have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will also help them so every one of us before you go every time you pray some of the salaf they say they used to say and they used to advise and one of the ways to achieve concentration he used to say when I stand up for prayer I imagine the sirat right in front of me Jahannam is to the left and to the right and you know how sharp it is and how thin it is and the angel of death is behind me the angel of death is coming because you don't know when he's, when he's coming and he might be coming just when you leave and so think of yourself how you are with the sirat in front of you and death is coming and so every time you pray you will make this you know put it in your heart that this might be your final prayer and it will help you to concentrate it will help you to be more focused and do the things that will remind you of the hereafter remind you of death also the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam also advised us to visit the sick to remind us also of the blessings that we have and to visit the grave ala inni ala kuntu nahaytukum an ziyarat al qubur fazuruha fa inna tudhakkirukum al akhira he said indeed i used to forbid you from visiting the graves but visit them now visit them for indeed they remind you of the hereafter remind you of death and remind you of the hereafter and so when you're praying also think of these things and when you're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for firmness, اِهْدِنَا الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ Think of the sirat that you're about to cross also. And ask Allah to be firm in this life, so that you also be firm in the, firm in the hereafter. اللَّهُمَ اَغْفِرْ لِلْمُسْلِمِينَ وَالْمُسْلِمَاتِ وَالْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ الْأَحْيَاءِ مِنْهُمْ وَالْأَمْوَاتِ اللَّهُمَ آتِ نُفُوسَنَا تَقْوَاهَا وَزَكِّيهَا أَنْتَ خَيْرُ مَنْ زَكَّاهَا أَنْتَ وَلِيُّهَا وَمَوْلَاهَا رَبَّنَا ظَلَمْنَا أَنفُسَنَا وَإِنْ لَمْ تَغْفِرْ لَنَا وَتَرْحَمْنَا لَنَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ اللهم اعز الاسلام والمسلمين اللهم اعز الاسلام والمسلمين اللهم اعز الاسلام والمسلمين واذل الشرك والمشركين ودمر اعداءك اعداء الدين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقينا عذاب النار إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما